All righty. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, boys and girls. <clears throat> um, today I am going to be reading chapter nine of Time for Andrew. Here we go. Chapter nine. <clears throat> That evening, I had my first dinner with the rest of the family. I was trying to do everything properly, which meant I had to watch the others and copy what they did. Bow my head for grace, use the right utensil for the right thing, pass food promptly, keep my left hand in my lap, chew with my mouth shut. While we were eating, Mrs. Tyler told her husband about Edward's visit. Mr. Tyler frowned. No doubt my esteemed brother sent him to make certain the house is still standing. I hope you sent the rascal packing. He paused to take a sip of water. No one said a word. We watched him swallow and waited for him to continue. If Ned wants to check on the property, he can come here himself and face me. I won't have that son of his pestering us. Mystified by the anger in his voice, I glanced at Mrs. Tyler. She was leaning toward him as if she wanted to touch his hand. But the table was a good deal longer than her arm. She tapped the white cloth instead and gave him an imploring look. <clears throat> Henry, please don't be so uncharitable. Think of the example you're setting. Mr. Tyler glazed at the ceiling for a moment and sighed loudly. Without looking at any of us, he said, quite right, Mildred. I stand corrected. Raising his fork, he smiled at his wife. What brought my dear brother's son to our house today? Ignoring the irony, Mrs. Tyler said, he came to see Andrew but it seemed that he was teasing him, wearing him out with silly questions and such. When he saw me, he took off fast enough. Mr. Tyler glanced at me. I am all too aware that you can take up for yourself, Andrew, but if Edward troubles, troubles you, please do not solve it in the usual fashion. You know how I feel about brawling in the streets. I simply will not tolerate it. You don't need to worry, Papa. Hannah said sweetly. Andrew bore Edward's insults without even raising a fist. He was a perfect gentleman. Both Mr. and Mrs. Tyler looked pleased, but few gave me a sharp kick under the table. If you ask me, he whispered, you let that bully get away with murder. Mr. Tyler frowned at us. Eat your peas, Theodore, and drink your milk too. You too, Andrew. Good food builds strong bodies and strong minds. Turning back to his wife, Mr. Tyler began talking about his day in court. For the rest of the meal, he described his successful prosecution of a man accused of embezzling large sums of money from a bank. No one else spoke. We ate quietly and listened to Mr. Tyler. After dinner, Theo, Hannah, and I sat on the porch steps talking. In the darkness, I felt safe and happy. It was nice to be part of a family, to have a sister and a brother even if they weren't mine for keeps. Tipping my head back, I gazed at the sky. Just look at all those stars, I said. They're so thick and bright. Millions and billions and trillions of them. In Chicago, you can't even see the Milky Way anymore. The air? Theo interrupted me. What do you know about Chicago? <laughs> Hannah's laughter saved me. Andrew's joshing you, Theo. He's never been out of Missouri in his whole entire life. I bit my lips so hard I tasted blood. Like a dope, I'd almost given myself away. Scared to say another word, I sat between Hannah and Thea, Theo. Hannah and Theo. A stranger again. An imposter. A boy without a family. Not Andrew, but Drew. I wish you socked Edward today, Theo said suddenly. He was asking for a trouncing. Hannah put her arm around me. For heaven's sake, Theo, this is Andrew's first day out of bed. Give him time. He'll get a spunk back soon enough. Theo learned, leaned around his sister to study my face in the moonlight. I hope so. Before you got sick, you never let in Edward insult you. I slid a little closer to Hannah and rested my head against her shoulder. This near... I could smell the rose water she sprinkled on her face and neck. Lucky Andrew, I thought. Lucky Theo. I'd have given anything to be her real brother. Theo's right, Andrew, Hannah said. Edward was testing you, seeing how far he could push you. If you don't take up for yourself, 
matters will get worse. Think of Frank Merriwell. He never fought unless he was pushed into it, but he always defeated his foes. Frank would have despised a bully like Edward as much as I do. As she spoke, Hannah clenched her fists as if she wanted to punch him herself. I shrank back from Hannah's fierce face. What would she think if she, if I said I never hit anyone in my life? The very idea of fighting Edward scared me half to death. He was even bigger than Martin. Needing to know more about my new enemy, I grabbed Hannah's arm. Why does Edward hate me so much? What did Andrew, I mean, what did I do to him? Luckily, the words had tumbled out of my mouth so fast, nobody noticed my blunder. Land's sakes, Hannah said. Edward doesn't hate you any more than he hates the rest of us. It's all because of the house, Theo butted in. Isn't that right, Hannah? Grandfather left it to Papa, and Uncle Ned got mad, and now they don't speak to each other except at church. Hannah put her finger to her lips. Hush, Theo, she whispered. We're not supposed to know about the will. Glancing behind her to make sure that no one was listening, she whispered. Poor Papa. It must be awful to despise your own brother. Uncle Ned took him to court, Theo said. If Andrew did something like that to me, I'd most certainly hate him. Hannah sighed and gazed in the sky. Those stars will be shining long after we're gone and forgotten. Just think, in a hundred years, who will care about this house? Or Papa and Uncle Ned? Or any of us? I stared at her. I'll care. I'll always care. I'll... Don't be silly. By 2010, we'll be dead and gone, Andrew. Strangers will be living here. If the house is still standing, that is. More than likely, it'll be a pile of rubble. No, Hannah, I whispered. No, don't say that. You'll live forever. And the house? I'll fix it up. I'll... But Hannah was too busy swatting mosquitoes to listen. Getting to her feet, she seized Theo's hand, Theo's and my hands, and led us to the door. We'd better get inside before we're eaten alive. A week passed, then another. Every night, I went to the attic looking for Andrew, but he never came. In the daytime, I went on playing my part. It wasn't easy. First of all, I had to be careful not to mention things like television or radio or computers or just about any modern event. These people hadn't even had World War I yet. What would they think if I started talking about atom bombs and nuclear submarines? The telephone was a box on the wall. It didn't have a dial. I had no idea how it worked. I knew nothing about gas lights either. When I blew one out, Mrs. Tyler was so upset she could hardly speak. I might have as asphyxiated all of us, she said. Luckily for me, the Tylers had indoor plumbing. Apparently something to brag about in these days. But they kept food cold in a wooden icebox like the one my father used as a stereo cabinet. A man delivered a huge block of ice once a week. I learned to look forward to his arrival because he always gave Theo and me little pieces to suck on. A real treat on a hot day. The Tylers didn't own a car. Not many people did. The few I saw were Fords, all black, all noisy. You could hear one coming miles away. Although the gas jet was my most spectacular mistake, I made plenty of others. Mrs. Tyler would send me to fetch something, and I wouldn't know where it was or what it was. She'd ask me to take a turn at the little organ in the parlor, and I'd just sit in there, crimson-faced, unable to play the simplest tune. I didn't know the words to In My Merry Old Mobile or Yip by Yaddy Yay, my favorite songs, according to Hannah. I couldn't remember going to the World's Fair in St. Louis, though everyone assured me that I ate so much that I got sick on the train coming home and threw up in a stranger's lap. Mrs. Tyler and I said I was blessed to forget that as well as the time I blew up the Armager's outhouse with a firecracker. Everyone blamed my forgetfulness on the fever. Mrs. Tyler claimed it had left holes in my memory. Only Buster knew the truth. I really wasn't the boy that I used to be. Although he stopped barking and growling, 
He avoided me whenever possible. He'd look at me, his fur would bristle, and he'd walk away, stiff-legged with hostility. One night, I went to the attic feeling more unhappy than, un than usual. It had been a steamy, hot summer day, the kind I once spent in an air-conditioned in air-conditioned places, and I'd made one stupid mistake after another. To top it all off, Mr. Tyler had scolded me at dinner for talking with my mouthful. He wanted to know if I'd forgotten my manners as well as everything else. The weather had put him in a temper, Mrs. Tyler said, but it hurt my feelings when he yelled at me. Dad never raised his voice, never made me feel dumb, never ranted and raved like a tyrant. Alone in the dark attic, I broke down and cried. I just couldn't help it. I missed my parents. I wanted to go home. I was sick and tired of being Andrew. A sudden silence made the hair on the back of my neck rise. A few feet away, a boy appeared at the top of the attic steps, wearing my rocket-printed pajamas. He stared at me, frowning and rubbing his eyes. Good grief, Drew, he said. How is a fellow supposed to sleep with the racket you're making up here? And that is the end of chapter nine. So now we've got Andrew back in the attic. What will happen next? Will Drew ever be able to return to his normal life or will he be stuck as Andrew? What will happen now that Andrew got cured from this dreadful disease that he actually passed away of. Hmm. I want to know what you're thinking. So share what your predictions are. Let me know what you're thinking and even share your favorite part. Have a fantastic day, boys and girls, and tune in next time for chapter 10.